Today in our 2016 Ford E450 motorhome, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Roadmaster rear anti-sway bar, part number RM-1139-147. Here with our factory sway bar, you'll see that we're going to have a lot of axle movement in relation to the vehicle. That's going to transfer into a lot of movement at the top of our RV. This is going to make for a lot more movement in the RV as we're heading down the road, making it a little more difficult to control. Here with our new sway bar installed, you're going to see a noticeable difference. You'll also feel a noticeable difference from inside the vehicle. We don't have nearly the weight transfer side to side at the top of the RV. Handling has been improved dramatically and so has the ride quality. This is going to cause us to work a lot less heading down the road anytime we want to travel. Here's our sway bar once we get it installed. As you can see, the custom design allows for clearance around all of our areas make sure we're not going to have any kind of interference and it's a, a very nice upgrade it's something that's going to look really nice for a long time not often you're going to look under your rv but it's going to hold up this is going to take care of leveling out our vehicle on turns on the uneven pavement when we maybe go off the edge of the road a little bit it's going to help to keep everything from tilting and this does make an immediate and noticeable difference whether you do rear or front or if you do them in conjunction with one another really makes a noticeable difference that you'll be able to feel as soon as you get out on the road. Now unlike the steel bar that we removed, this is going to resist corrosion. It's got that nice cadmium coating on it, so we're not going to have to worry about corrosion. It's going to look good for a long time. Same with our straps here, or our clamp bands as they come up. You're going to have that nice corrosion resistant finish. So something that will stand up to the test of time and really last a long time and give us superior driving and handling performance. Now installation really is pretty simple in the whole deal. You're going to use our existing hardware and mounting locations here underneath the axle and we'll only need to drill two holes in our frame rail where our end links come up and connect and it's in. So it's a pretty straightforward installation that you should be able to take care of at home. All right, look at our side to side comparison here. This is our new Roadmaster kit versus our factory kit. Now looking at sway bar to sway bar, our factory is one inch steel. That's going to work out fine for your vans and things like that that aren't, don't carry much of a load. But once we turn this into a motorhome and we're adding thousands of thousands of pounds and our center of gravity is getting higher, this just doesn't cut it. What we do with our Roadmaster upgrade is we move up to an inch and an eighth bar. So this gives us superior rigidity, great strength, and it makes worlds of difference. Also, we're replacing our small rubber factory bushings with polyurethane bushings. We've got some lubricant to put in there. You want to be sure you put that in there so you don't get any squeaks. And our straps, as you can see again, much heavier duty, corrosion resistant material there. That's going to prevent corrosion. Also, you see our end link diameter, significantly different. We've got a nice heavy duty end link. We're going to have urethane bushings at each end. That's going to replace our rubber bushing here and also the two rubber pinch bushings that we had at the other end where it actually connected into the sway bar. Here's the bolt that we removed previously. As you can see, we're gonna have one much sturdier. That's gonna replace both the circle here at the end link, and it also replaces our bar. It's a little bit, for, bit different design. We're gonna use mainly all factory mounting locations, just one half inch hole to drill on each side, so should go pretty smoothly. All right, this is where our rear sway bar is going to be located. You can see here's the rear differential. And it just comes right around the back side of it, connects up here into the side of the frame on each side. These are called the end links. So we want to come to the top of the end link. We're going to find a nut up there. We can use a 15 millimeter socket. We'll find a bolt right up there going through the frame, and it comes out here on the inside. We're going to remove that with a 15 millimeter socket. Now we'll go to the other side where we'll do the same thing there. Now we'll travel in from our end link right here to the actual axle. We're going to have a bolt on each side. Here we'll use a 13 millimeter. Now on this side I'm going to leave my bolt started just a little bit. That way when we take down the other side it won't fall. We are going to hang on to this hardware. We'll be reusing it with our new brackets.
All right, I'm gonna set this aside. Now the grease, this is an important step. What you wanna do is grease your bushings. We'll put some on the inside of our bushing and also a little bit on the outside doesn't hurt, but mainly inside here's the area you wanna focus on. This is gonna prevent any kind of squeaking or anything that we might get. All right, then we'll just get a good amount of it on our finger there. Just rub it all the way around the inside. And then again, a little bit on the outside if you want to. Not required, but can help. Now we'll take our bushing, we're just gonna bring that around our sway bar. Do that on both sides. We can put our clamps right over the top and we'll be ready to lift it up into position. Now as we reinstall our factory bolts, we're gonna place a washer on, and these are gonna go in all four of the locations. Just wanna get them started enough for support there. And we can go around and take care of the three other locations as well. Now we'll snug down each of our bolts to take out most of the slack and we'll leave our clamps just a little bit loose. Now we can rotate our sway bar upward and we want to make sure that it's making contact with the frame in the same position. After we've done that, we can snug down our bolts and we'll torque them to the manufacturer's specifications. Now we're gonna place our bolt right through our sway bar, slide on a washer, our end link, slide on another washer, and then we'll just put our nut on there to hold it in place. We'll do the same thing for our other side. Now we'll snug these down, but we'll still want them to rotate. Now we're gonna rotate our end link upward. You see it's gonna go right between the spring pack there and the frame. And as long as the frame on our RV is level, we can use a level to get our end link in the right position here. All right, looking at right there. So now we'll mark the center of that at the bottom of our frame on each side. We can just rotate those down out of the way now. Now from the bottom of our frame, we need to measure up four and a half inches. And let's mark that right up on the side rail. Same thing for our other side. Now I want to use a straight edge and again, little level will come in handy. I'm going to make my line straight up so I know where it intersects that line that's four and a half inches up from the bottom of the frame. Now we're going to start drilling out our holes. You can see here on our driver's side frame rail, there's just about every wire or what you, anything you can imagine running down this rail. Since we're drilling in from the outside, I certainly don't want to hit these, so what I'm going to do just take a block of wood and we can slide it right in between all of that and the frame rail. So when we actually punch through, we won't have to worry about doing any damage. Now we're gonna go right up to the X that we created and we eventually wanna to get to a 17 30 seconds bit. I'm gonna start with a smaller one and I'm gonna take about four steps up as we go just till we get to the appropriate size. Now we'll head over to the driver's side where we can repeat that same process. Now with both of our holes drilled out, it's time to get our end links connected to our frame. This is gonna be kind of the same order that we did the hardware down here. So we're gonna place a washer on each side of the end link, our bolt gonna go through it. Then we're gonna take our nylon locking nut. We're gonna place that on the other end of our bolt there. All right, just leave that hand tight for now. Go do the same thing on the other side. All right, now let's tighten our end link bolts down to the torque specifications that we can find in our instructions there. We want to do this for our lower section and also the upper.
you can see here one of the brake cables that run by just naturally it's kind of going to want to rest on that bolt so i'm going to use a zip tie right above it there just to keep it up and out of the way make sure it's protected that'll keep it up here away from the moving joint so shouldn't have to worry about any kind of rubbing or anything and with everything torqued down, that's going to complete our installation the Roadmaster Rear Anti-Sway Bar, part number RM-1139-147, on our 2016 Ford E450 motorhome.